Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Do I have to sing it? <laughs> Hey everybody, it's the Rambo and we're here again for another week of merriment and joyous mayhem. Uh, and we go on until midnight uh, tonight, uh, that's Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, we'll get to our citizens panel in about, oh, I don't know, 25 minutes from right now. But once every three weeks, we are, shall we say, honored uh, to have the presence of our next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from San Frangima, California, it's Will Durst. Hello, Will. Hello, how are you doing this morning, Alex Bennett? Well, I just got up a while ago and you probably got up two minutes ago, right? Yeah, pretty close. When when did you get up? When did you get up? What's your what's your normal time for getting up? Normally about eight thirty, I get up about eight fifteen. So I could take a shower. Really? I slept till 11 today. Oh, nice. I take a Xanax to put me to sleep. I need a, I, I, I'm at the age where I need a sleeping pill to let me just sleep all night long and not wake up. Nice. Uh, I, I find two beers works perfectly well for me. Really? I can, drink, I can drink coffee all day long as long as I have a cup of water for every uh, cup of coffee. Because uh, it flushes it out. And then if I have two beers at night, boom, I'm gone. A glass of water will flush out the coffee? Well, that's my body. That That's how it works. Everybody's body chemistry is different. So I uh, see. Well, you know. ladies and gentlemen, it's the Mark Twain of political comedy. I, I, uh, I, I saw a... Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I... I know. Yeah, is, yeah. That, is that Eloise? It is. See, Very I'm begin, good. I'm beginning to identify the cats now. Yeah, that's Eloise. Now you see, if you hold that up, we'll like triple the ratings because cute cat pictures. Oh yeah, you can use that as the uh, the it, capture, it, video it, it, capture. It, 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 will, will and Eloise. Yeah, right. <laughs> No, I was I I saw one of your uh, one of your uh, tweets, and it reminded me of something else. Tell me if you got it from somewhere else. It said it may turn out uh, turn out the only time Trump told the truth in public was when he said that if you voted for Hillary, we'd end up with a president under criminal investigation. Sure enough, a plurality of us voted for Hillary, and now the president is under criminal investigation. Lock him up. Now, I seem to remember Goldwater having a similar statement about losing the election. Oh, really? Yes, about, I said that if you voted for the uh, opponent, the war, uh, something, if you voted, uh, for, uh, right. they, they say if you voted for me, the war would escalate, and you voted for me, and sure enough, the war escalated. The war escalated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. But I, lo I, lo I love me that post. Barry. Hmm? Me and Barry. Yeah. Uh, you, you're going to get a lot of retweets on that one, though, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, but we have, a, we have quite a bit to talk about here, uh, you know. Uh, what you think of Michelle Wolf? Michelle Wolf? Yeah, at the correspondence. I there. didn't really watch it, to be honest with uh. you. But I, I, my feeling has always been that if you're going to hire a comedian to host the correspondence dinner, then let them be a comedian. And don't sit there criticizing the level of the jokes they're telling because that dinner is kind of a roast, isn't it? It's turned into that. It wasn't always. It's just supposed to be a uh, comedy entertainment, and then it became political uh, during uh, Reagan and Bush and uh, Clinton. And, and Obama. Obama, and, uh, Obama got yeah. up and would, like, read the riot act to everybody. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and the president would actually write material and go along with it. And 
Trump hasn't shown up in the last couple of years, so it's different. In, in being a comedian that's asked to do the correspondence dinner, isn't that just a thankless job? Every one of them gets criticized on some level. Pretty much. Pretty much. Larry Wilmore actually did very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But did, uh, but was he criticized? That was, that was during uh, Obama, so he was able to pick on the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I well, mean, Don and, Imus uh, doing Clinton, uh, doing uh, Lewinsky, Monica Lewinsky jokes in front of Clinton. Oh, really? I don't. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah and I remember Stephen Colbert got in deep doo doo because uh, he said what the whole country was thinking during like the fifth year of Bush. Yeah. So, so, but my my problem is, the comedian gets hired to make that audience laugh and you realize you get a bigger audience behind the cameras but that audience in in uh, the Hinkley Hilton in Washington you know that audience is a, a, a tough audience to begin with and you're supposed to make them laugh not feel uncomfortable well you have to believe to begin with that correspondents have a sense of humor <laughs> yeah only because they're educated yeah I got I had a thought yesterday about the way in which we expect things out of our out of our politicians that i saw a story where a democrat was afraid to go against something because he was afraid of what his constituents would think when it was time to vote and i'm just thinking if you're a democrat and you're a liberal you should let your your elected official the one who goes to washington to represent you say anything he wants to and think anything he wants to and be a free thinker. Or maybe he doesn't, you don't agree with a, him on a particular issue, but there's no reason not to vote for him. You know what I'm saying? That what we're doing is it's the American public that's forcing Washington to be so polarized because they're so afraid of not getting reelected. Does that make well, any sense? The major culprit in this is the National Rifle Association. Because it's one issue, and they can take down uh, a Republican, a conservative. They can take down a conservative based on one issue. So they yeah. all have to toe the line on that one issue, but, no matter what they think. But aren't About we guns but, in schools but or anything. aren't we as 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 liberals shooting ourselves in the foot when we say, "Well, I won't vote for so and so because," well, like for instance, Schumer is like a big advocate of Israel. Okay, I'm not. That's not the reason I won't vote for Schumer. I won't, I won't vote for Schumer because he's a whore. But, you know, because I always had a saying, you know, uh, Sunday is a dead news day. And so the best day to make news if you're a politician is on Sunday. And he's the only politician, practically, that can make news on Sunday <laughs> because his Sabbath is on Saturday. So I used to have a saying, if it's Sunday, it must be Schumer. You know, because he's always holding a press conference on Sunday. He's always making news on Sunday. Monday, you don't hear a word from Schumer. <laughs> well, that's very astute commentary. That's uh, I think you've added to the political discourse. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, should, do we expect too much out of our uh, for them to tow a political line, or should we just say, "Hey, okay, I disagree with them on that issue, but hey, he represents us well." You know, well, I I agree with you completely, one hundred percent. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, but it's this it, it, even on the part of the of the of the liberals on the part of the uh, Democrats. There's this polarization that we create by forcing these guys to kind of parrot what they think you want to hear. Well, also, how many? What percentage of his district should he represent? Should he reflect? Should he reflect 51% of his district? Uh, should he reflect 75%, you know, or 10% if he's, because they elected him and he's going to make some tough choices and and uh, if they don't like his his decision, they can make a new decision in two years. Well, and vote I mean, him I mean or he, in he, case, six years. he was voted, let's say he's a Democrat. He was voted in by Democrats, basically. But his job is to represent everybody in his constituency. 
His, right. jo- his job is to bring back it's the a district. And, and, his district. And his job is to bring back the pork, you know. Uh, to that particular part of the uh, the country, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, all I'm saying is, is that Democrats are as guilty of shooting themselves in the foot as Republicans, you know. Uh, they become just as dogmatic as the Republicans have. It's just we don't like the way the Republicans are dogmatic, but we do like the way the liberals are dogmatic. And, I should, don't, and we shouldn't I don't be. Know. We should be bigger thinkers than that. I'd like to think that I'm capable of voting for a Republican because I think he does a good job, you know? Yeah, but, you know, Democrats always say that because... That's what the very term liberal means. Liberal means accepting of many viewpoints. Yeah. That's that's what the term means. That's who we represent. And we always say, oh, I yeah, I could vote for a Republican. Name one. Name one. Mm, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. Well, you see, I, I couldn't today. And I'll t- well, okay, if I were in Arizona, I might be able to vote for McCain. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm not allowed to make that joke. Yeah, but who cares? Who, who cares? How, who, 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 cares who cares how he face. votes? He's got a brain tumor. Uh, <laughs> do you know our president has yet to get on somewhere and say that was a bad statement that he made, that she made? Uh, you know, he he has not decried that statement at all. No, no. And and normally. Morning. The question. Yeah. Normally, if there was that kind of gaffe, a president would say, "Listen, we're very sorry. The man is not well. We may disagree with him politically, but we don't make jokes about his health." Blah blah blah. But Trump has no fucking class. He's he th- an oaf. He thinks that you get class by painting everything gold, and that's it. I'm a classy person. Hey, I got gold everywhere. I got gold leaf here, gold leaf. I got gold faucets in my bathroom. By the way, you know, years ago, they, uh, do you remember Jim Baker? Remember the oh, yeah, uh, PTL yeah, Club? Games, yeah. Which I loved. I loved that show. I used to watch it every day. It was hilarious. It was like watching a religious variety show, right? And eventually they they arrested him and stuff because of, People, he, not because of him. Truthfully, he was not really that dishonest. There were people, though, that were sitting there in the county room stuffing their pockets full of money, you know. Wouldn't you? Yeah, sure. It's coming cash. in in cash, cash, right? Cash. But he said he was going to build an amusement park, and he built an amusement park. Fuck you. He did what he said he was going to do. But then they said in the hotel, his suite had gold faucets. And they made a big deal about the gold faucets. And uh, uh, all I can think of is, guess who's got gold faucets? Trump. But are they real gold? Or are they gold-plated? Well, isn't gold-plated gold? Yeah, but it's just, you know, I mean, any any one of us can have gold, gold-plated gold faucets. Yeah. You just go out and buy some paint that has, uh, you know, 12-carat yeah. gold flakes in it and... And you paint your faucet. I just, all I know is I just don't want my bathroom looking like the one at the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> you know. <laughs> ever see that? Ever see that photo of him at the piano and uh, Melania on top wearing a nightie? She's on top of the piano. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's it's great. What a classy first couple. Yeah, yeah. And now she's got a bad kidney. Eh, that sounds suspicious, doesn't it? What do you mean? Sounds suspicious. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't see. That's the thing. I don't know. As I have no idea of how much we hear is actually the truth. And and I'm I'm a, a conspiracy kind of a guy, but I'm not. You know, uh, Richard Belzer. I'm not Randy Credico. I'm not that kind of. I I am prepared to believe. Um, eighty-five percent of what we hear is true, but and fifteen percent will never know. But what if what I know, uh, don't know, is more than what I know? What if, what if it's the 
we only know 15% and 85% is either made up or hidden. Well, I have no idea. Well, you know, uh, she, 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 she hears this all the time. You know, the presidential administrations deny everything. And then four years later, uh, the books start coming out. Oh, yeah, that was true. We just made shit up. Yeah. You know, you hear this all the time. And that's why the American people have, have no belief in anything. That's why they have no trust. Why, why, don't, why, why, don't, why, don't, why don't we start I, spreading the rumor that it was an abortion? What? That huh? it was an abortion and that she uh, uh, she didn't want Trump's son. She's 49. I know, but, you know, hey, I don't know. A lot of women haven't gone through menopause at 49. And you can even, by the way, you can even have a baby after menopause. I know, you remember Dana, oh, really? you know Dana Gould, <laughs> right? He always used to talk about how he was a menopausal baby. Who? Dana Gould. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's possible. And quite Gould's frankly, good. I wouldn't want another son at Spawn of Satan, would you? <laughs> uh, I don't. I, Baron does not look like him. No. No. <laughs> he looks like Frank Sinatra. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and Harry does not look like Prince Charles. No, no, there's no way that was... Uh, he looks just like the bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, have, have they, they haven't done any DNA on that, have they? No, they, they're not going to. I didn't want my DNA either. Boy, Someone wouldn't you... Offered. The best job in the world is being hairy. You know, you're never going to be king. Never. But you're going to get all the privileges. You know, you get all the, all, but uh, but none of the hard work. But then you see the guy hogging the spotlight and and making decisions and and I don't I don't think what's the other one William? Yeah, one's getting married. Is it William or Harry? Harry's getting married. Is he? Yeah. And William's first in line, or is it the other way around? Uh, William's first in line, and then he had uh, three heirs, so they're second, oh, yeah. third, and so fourth. So Harry's fourth well, in actually, line. Well, actually, William is second in line because his father's first in line. And his mother's hovering, his, his, his father's hovering over his, you know, the queen yeah. like like she's, uh, like he's an, a buzzard waiting for her to die. What is she, 94? Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, every morning he probably wakes up, looks at her, and goes, "Will you die already?" I mean, you know, I. But the question is, will he become king, ever, or, or ever, or will he decide to just pass it on to to uh, William? Yeah, uh, and I think that would be the best thing to do. I mean, what you're going to be king for a couple of years? Eh. Uh, he spent his entire life, you know, on the top step, waiting to step on the platform. Yeah. He's poised like this his entire life. Yeah. And mom refuses to die. Now, here's the other one about the, if we're going to talk about the wedding, because it's coming up this weekend. Yeah. And I, I don't know why we're so fascinated by it. You know, it's not like a king, like William was getting married and he's the future king of England. It's Harry right. getting married and he's the future prince. Prince, Constant. I guess. Yeah, yeah uh, you know. Uh, is it because uh, uh, Meghan is half black? Well, I think I think that's part of it. I think, the fa but we we always get very fascinated in those coronations. All the networks send people over there, and so on. Yeah, she is an American. That does give us the local appeal on the deal. But the father is not going to walk her down the aisle. How come? Because uh, he had some pictures taken of him for the paparazzi and stuff, and he felt that he was an embarrassment to the royal family, so he's not going to come. What? Uh, yes. Have you seen the father, by the way? No. How she is the daughter of that guy, I don't see Pro any resemblance. No oh, really? resemblance. I mean, this guy looks like a fat redneck from the South. You know, the mother must have been the gorgeous one. Because Megan's beautiful. She's yeah, she lovely. Is. is is mom still alive? Yeah, mom's gonna be there, supposedly. Oh yeah. Mom will be there. Yeah, so mom uh, mom they're not married anymore. The mom will walk her probably down the aisle. Somebody's gotta walk her down the aisle. Oh wow. You know. I am I'm thinking maybe like uh oh, I don't know. Well, what's a good British comic? Uh um 
you know. Um, um, uh, Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry could walk her down the aisle. <laughs> Yeah. And make some pithy comment as he does that. You know? Or Eddie Azard. Eddie, Az Eddie Azard. Yeah, they could share shoes. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, so I mean, it, 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 that that that's a that's a great uh, a great story this week. Uh, I mean, and plus the fact that she is half black. Uh, and, BBC and, America is going crazy every night. There's something. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it. In tribute to the royal family, that doesn't seem to phase them at all. I mean, I'm sure they'd be going apoplectic if it was William that was marrying her, okay? Because he's going to be the future king. But Harry, it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, you remember uh, 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 Elizabeth's uncle, uh, who became king of England, wanted to marry a... American Wallace Simpson. Remember oh, that? oh, yeah, uh, Edward. Yeah, and because she was an American, and because she was divorced, right? Uh, he couldn't become king and have her as his wife. So I'd rather be with a woman that I love and turn into a Nazi. You know, so uh, you know all about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He it, abdicated. It, yeah, but he also gave secrets to the Nazis. He went and visited Hitler. He was like uh, 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 very much a Nazi. That's why the family really came to hate him. Oh, I did not know yeah. that. Now that, of course, the whole royal. You don't, you don't see that in the King's speech. No, no, that no, that's the other. That's the that's his brother who took over from him. Right. Okay. Um, uh, he that's the one that took over. He didn't want to take over because he had the speech impediment. But uh, no, the one that uh, that abdicated, Duke of Windsor. Um, uh, oh, I think he was actually king. No, he, he was king. Yeah, technically, but he had not been. The coronation had not taken. Oh, place. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, so, yeah. I think it's about a year later they do the coronation. It's it takes a lot of preparation. Yeah. Got to get the coach out of storage, you know, and crap like that. <laughs> yeah, you got to turn the mice into footmen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So how goes the nation, Will? Uh, he, he, we're in a constant state of uh, frenzy, and I don't know. I don't. I think it's. I think it's altering people's perception. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, the Democrats are turning into the little boy who cried wolf because oh, this is gonna be crazy and this is gonna be crazy and he did this and he and and we miss we miss the obvious that he's just an insufferable oaf <laughs> and uh, I I don't know if the Iran deal I have no idea I, you know I tried reading the Iran deal it doesn't make any sense to me there's you know, now he's got us in a summit with the with the kid from North Korea. Yeah, and and like two months ago, they were arguing publicly, globally. I was calling him Rocket Boy. Yeah, and, and now they're gonna meet. And now he, now he's, he's gonna measure their nuclear buttons. Yeah, and everybody, you know, then of course he should get the Nobel Prize for this, right? You know what? <laughs> Maybe. No. He wants a Nobel <laughs> Prize because Obama had a Nobel Prize, right? Uh, no way he's getting the Nobel Prize. To begin with, you know who should get the Nobel Prize is well, China. Yeah. No, China. Do you remember oh. Kim Jong-un took his uh, his uh, little choo-choo yeah. ride to, yeah, yeah. To, to China? Yeah. And all of a sudden, when he came back, his whole tone changed. What did the, what riot act did they read him? You know, like uh, no, no, fo no food for the rest of your life. No food for the rest of your life. So he finally decided, I better do something about this. And it was right after that. So the Chinese, if anybody should get a Nobel Prize, would be them. Okay. But I, I decided the Peace Prize this year should go to the White Helmets, the guys in Syria who pull kids out from rubble. Oh, the White Helmets. I yeah. thought you said the White Elvis. The White Elvis? Yeah, the White Elvis should get the Peace Prize. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. 
Uh, what have you been doing? Nothing. I, I just yeah. sit, I just sit here waiting to die. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, but yeah. so you don't get out. You don't enjoy New York. I'm coming to New York in November. Oh well, come see us, or we even have a room here if you don't have a place to stay. I appreciate it. I might take you up on that. I uh, I'm going to be performing my little my little show at a theater downtown, like a a seventy seater for just a week. Mm. So. Yeah. He always refers to his his act as his little show. My little show, yeah. It's also his nickname for his penis. My so, little uh, <laughs> No, that's little Willie. That's little Willie. <laughs> uh no, so I no, I don't do anything. You know, I do this and I'm I'm doing a daily uh, news so, news break thing, uh br- breaking news thing. Just a little a uh, little I found I, I do an 8 minute it's about comes out to about eight minutes uh, news break every day. Every day, yeah, saying what the news is and showing a picture and showing something from the, the show the night before. Doesn't take me a lot to put together, and it's getting a huge amount of viewers. I mean, what happens in with the internet is the shorter the program is, the more popular it becomes. <laughs> Family Guy did a bit about how the most popular sh- they put on the most popular show on the internet. It's called the Six Second Show, you know, <laughs> and it's just uh, it's a, 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 a runaway hit, you know. <laughs> Nobody, I do a two hour show every night. Bullshit. I get like you know eighty people who watch it after the fact. This thing, I'm getting hundreds and hundreds of people watching it, and it's you know it's amazing. It's just amazing. So that's I, the future. So I've added that to my my thing, and then I might even I belong to a gym now for oh five years maybe. Yeah, I've never seen the inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep paying the dues. Yeah, it's like fifteen bucks a month. Oh, all right. yeah. What the hell, you know? So I now have a pharmacy that's right next door to the gym. So I'm thinking maybe I'll go today. I'll go to the gym. It's just it's just a thought that I've had, you know, and and, <laughs> and get on a bike and then pedal on the bike for about twenty minutes and then go pick up my 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 uh, uh, prescriptions. prescriptions next door and and go home. You know, that, that's my exciting day. Otherwise, it's not a fucking thing to do in New York. I know you find that hard to believe, but you know, the place is too sterile. It's not the New York I knew. It's not the, uh, 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 hello, how are you? Fuck you. Well, I didn't mean to say that to you, sister. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that was the New York I liked. The fuck me, fuck you, New York. Yeah. You know. And now it's Disney fied. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. You know, I just so, I, when I see it on the calendar, I just look so forward to our little chats that we have with each other. Yeah, say hello to Bubbles next time you talk to him. I just saw him. I did a little show down at uh, Sunnyvale, and he wandered by and did a guest set. Yeah. And uh, he says he sees you every couple of weeks. Yeah, so. well, we don't see each other because he doesn't have... Uh, Skype. In fact, he does. He only has dial-up. So you know, uh, it, it, it's. I have to call him on the phone. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you, you know, know, that's Bubbles, the ultimate luddite. I I love him. You know, yeah. it, Bubbles you wouldn't be. Like bu- you don't have to go through Pam, the operator. Yeah. Hi, Pam. Can you get me Alex in New York? A pu- Bubbles wouldn't be Bubbs uh, if he if he didn't have dial-up. No, you if know? he had a smartphone. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Will Durst. Oh, wait a minute. Before you go, show me San Francisco out your window. It's a little foggy. It's a little foggy. Well, who cares if it's foggy? See that? Even if you look far enough, you'll see volcanoes spewing. That, that's, yeah, uh, you can see Hawaii. Yeah, I can see Hawaii from my window. Yeah. Thank you, Will. Bye, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that's our good friend, Will Durst. We love Will, and we love having him on, and uh, he's here about once every three weeks. Uh, He's a very busy man. He's a very busy man, and he writes and stuff like that. Go to his, uh, he has a, a blog. 
that he does, and I think you can actually subscribe to it or be part of it. Uh, and uh, uh, he's, a, he's a very funny guy and, uh, and knows his stuff. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't put my, my shirt on. See, when I went to, I, during that, I, because it was pre-recorded, I went to the bathroom, and then I took the shirt off, and I like having my shirt on. I just like the look. See? It, it covers what paunch I still might or might not have. I don't know. Anyway, let me see here. Where are we? Okay, we got to go to the, uh, we got to go to our, uh, um, go online here. Uh, and uh, uh, open up the, uh, the Skype line so that people can call us uh, if they want to. If you don't want to, well, to hell with you. Um, just a reminder that every day I've been doing something, and I, I don't know how long I'm going to keep doing it, but it, it seems to be getting quite a few people watching it. And even today, which was less than... Yesterday we had a phenomenal amount of people watching it. Today it's a little less... But uh, still, a lot of people, more than, than watch or listen to this show. Uh, and it's called uh, Alex Bennett's Breaking News. And I just simply tell you what the few basic news items are for the day. I show a picture of the day. I show a clip from the show the night before, and I get out of there, and I'm through. Today I did it in, what, six and a half minutes, something like that. So it's, it's a quick little show that you can watch if you... Uh, if you go online uh, and uh, look for it, uh, 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 you go over to Facebook. Right now, you can go over to Facebook and watch it. Don't watch this. This is going to be boring. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even think Phil's calling tonight. I think it's a Phil-free night, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's going to be gone two nights this week, which uh, uh, is, I think, a record for him, actually. Uh, so, I mean, he had his prostate removed, and he still did the show. But, you know... He's, he's gotten into this. He goes to this club, and he shows his photographs that he took 20 years ago, and then he, he wins prizes for He wins the uh, you know, best picture of the week or something like that, and that seems to satisfy his Jones. You know, I'm, He's going to be no living with him when he comes back one week and didn't win uh, the thing. So anyway, uh, I'm just waiting for somebody to call, you know, uh, and uh, if you, uh, you want to find out how this whole thing works and how you can be part of the Citizens Panel, it's very simple. Go over to gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. Over on the right-hand side of the page is a whole tutorial on how to call. It's very simple. You simply have to install Skype if you haven't got it already. Most people do. And then you, you give us a call, and we're... We're here. We're at your beck and, and whatever. So uh, give us a call. Uh, and, and using Skype, we we'll always welcome new new people because uh, that freshens up the, uh, the uh, what we call the, uh, the citizen panel pool. Uh, uh, but our, we have, there's a phone number there. You can use a telephone if you want to. You don't have to use Skype. So you, and there's also, believe it or not, you can turn your Skype on and there's a little button you can click on the page that will automatically dial the program. So it, could it be easier? No, it couldn't be easier than that. Okay? All right. Okay. Anyway, so I'm sitting here waiting for people to call. I noticed Tom Amaguchi was coming online. Maybe we might hear from him tonight. That would be nice. That would always be nice. Um... Anyways, I've been doing this thing every day, this, uh, this uh, breaking news thing, and for some reason, it's immensely popular, more popular than this thing. Now, I think I know the reason why. It's like six, seven, eight minutes tops, right? In, out, nobody gets hurt. Uh, and uh, people don't have to spend a lot of time dealing with it. They can just have it on and watch it, and I bet it even has more people who watch the whole thing than watch this. But it's not like this is a two-hour slog for a lot of people. And that's not the easiest thing in the world. And so that's why I'm uh, doing it very simply. Okay. And I thought I'd give it a try, and it's, it's working. Well, as I saw, because I saw him, coming, saw him coming online, ladies and gentlemen, here is, of course, Tom Yamaguchi from San Francisco. Hey. Well, actually, Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. Across... 
across yeah. the way from Will Durst. Yeah, of course. Name all the bugs on your shirt. I don't know the bugs on my shirt. Now, they so just why, look like nice bugs. So why are you wearing the bugs on your shirt? Somebody gave me the shirt. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Was, the bugs are part of the shirt. The, I know the bugs are part of the shirt. But the I just bugs did not land on my shirt. No, once, once, <laughs> let's see here. Sit up a little straighter. Let me see if I could identify some of them there. You got, I don't know, I thought that looked like a ladybug, but it isn't. The second one. The first one looks like a roach. Uh, and there's, uh, there's a beetle in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can you recognize them at all, uh, Phil? I mean, not Phil. Uh, <laughs> Don't ever Scott. call me Phil. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> oh my God, I'm out of here. No, Scott, can you can you can you name them at all? Well, uh, the one in the middle looks like a tick almost. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it? I don't know. Or don't, maybe that's a beetle. Now, now who, was it given to you as a present, or was it given to you as a joke? No, it was given to me by someone who couldn't wear it because she was allergic to it. Oh. oh. Well, <laughs> Says, I don't want this shirt. You want it? Says, sure. That's a good way to get hand-me-downs. Yeah. <laughs> me, see here, I'm turning on the air conditioner because it's getting a little toasty in here. By the way, Alex, before we drift too far, we talked you came back to the Will Durst conversation. Yeah. Um, his tweet. Yeah. Actually, that's what you're referring to was an old William F. Buckley line. And, and the William, William F. Buckley said, uh, they told me if I voted for Goldwater, we'd start bombing Hanoi. So I voted for Goldwater. And sure enough, he started bombing Hanoi. Yeah, well, that at least that's true. But I seem to remember it uh, having to do with Goldwater. But it might have had to do with the Goldwater election. Well, yeah, it was Buckley's talking talk, about. You know, say they, they told him if we voted for Goldwater, that we'd be bombing Hanoi. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, the joke. But uh, yeah. So anyway, we, we uh, by the way, the latest news uh, uh, is that uh, Kim Jong Un is kind of mad. <laughs> he's throwing a North Korean hissy fit. Mm -hmm. uh, he and he's maybe going to call off the American uh, the discussions with uh, Donald Trump, and he doesn't want to talk to the South Koreans right now, because they're yeah. doing military training or uh, actions or whatever they call those things uh, well, off offshore from North Korea, and he figures that's not right. Not when I'm trying to ask for peace, and he may be right. He may have a point. What do you think, Scott? I think he is. I think he's right. I mean, he's trying to be a team player, and, and, you know, they're just, you know, trying to piss him off, I guess. I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, you if you're going to show, if he's going to show good faith, mm -hmm. and you want him to show good faith, then you have to show some good faith, too. Yeah. You know, and that's how you, how you do international politics. But apparently, one of the things that really, what, what he's talked about is, that he wants to discuss the denuclearization of the entire Korean Peninsula. And that mm -hmm. would include, I think, not holding, uh, you know, Navy, uh, uh, what do they call them? Uh, war uh, games? War games or whatever off the coast of, uh, yeah. off the coast of, uh, of, of, of Korea. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 what do you think? Uh, you, do you hear what we were talking about there, Patrick, with... Uh, with Kim Jong. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want my? Yeah. Oh no! I I I I I had you call the show so you could sit there and not say a fucking thing. We could feel sorry for you because you're in a wheelchair. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, I. Look, these were already scheduled, and there are military exercises. Yeah. And there's no reason to call them off. And if Kim Jong Un is going to throw a fit over something that we've done many, many times over the last several years with the South Koreans, and it's never been anything that's actionable toward North Korea, it's a matter of what we do with Japan, and it's just getting them ready, uh, militarized, getting them 
up to speed on technology. No, but I think I think some of this he's blaming some of this on South Korea because I think South Korea is involved in it. It is. Yeah, yeah. It, it military exercises where yeah. the United States and South Korea well, are working. Yeah, but working. What, what, let's say you're president of the United States, okay? Believe me, you can call these things off at a moment's notice. It's not like they aren't out there to begin with, okay? Uh, so why don't you say, hey, you know, right now we're we're trying to negotiate a peace. Let's not play war games at this time. But, you know, it's, it's just not a good idea. What? Korea may want it because they don't trust the North Korean. And if it's already scheduled, so what? And yeah. if he's throwing a fit over it, Tough shit. Go fuck your sister and 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 then come back to the table. Well, number I one, mean, I don't think he fucks his sister, and uh, <laughs> I would. Huh? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen Kim Jong Un's sister, but if she looks anything like Kim Jong Un, I I don't know she, if I'd want to fuck her. What? She was at the Olympics. Oh yeah, she was kind of good looking, wasn't she? Exactly. I'd fuck her. So how did he come out so ugly? Well, there's always one in the family. Yeah, I mean, he's like a throwback. He's a troglodyte. I mean, uh, uh, the only person that looked fatter than him next to him was Pompeo. Somebody said to me, look how fat Kim Jong-un is. And I looked at a picture of Kim Jong-un, and he was standing next to Pompeo, and Pompeo was fatter. Wait, wait, wait till Trump meets him. Oh, oh, it's like they're going to throw the whole world off balance because you know they're all in one place at the same time what i'm paying for trump and um chris christie couldn't go oh oh oh, oh saying yeah and him young on would look like, like a walking skeleton for god's sake yeah he feels svelte <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah yeah well i just i yeah i don't understand it uh i mean uh but, I mean, I just think that, I don't know, at a time like this, maybe it's time to say, well, we'll, we'll show, he's going to blow up his tunnels. We'll show some goodwill. We'll hold off on the, on the war games. Okay? You know? Plus, you know, save us some money. How much do war games cost us every time they do them? How many gajillions <laughs> of dollars does that cost? And for, <laughs> and for what? It's just peanuts with what they spend, so it's not that big of a deal. Oh, well, yeah, peen yeah, but, you know, I just think, I, I would like to think that we could get to a point in this country where we'd watch every penny, you know? Yeah. As I've gotten older and I'm unemployed and I'm living on uh, a fixed income, I watch every penny I spend. Uh, but we don't seem to watch every penny we spend. I mean, can I just ask this? If the president decided to host more things at the White House and not Mar-a-Lago, Lago, how much money would we save? Okay. <laughs> yes, Patrick. I think you can go back. I'm sure further, but my, I mean, the, the thing that I remember the most from my childhood was the seven or eight hundred dollar toilet seat that Reagan had. Yes. That we started not giving a shit about the budget. Well, no, we did give a shit. It happened to be a toilet seat. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think you can, I'm sure it can go back even further, but that is my first well, recollection I, I, of when budget and deficit didn't matter anymore because we were just going to spend, you know, $200 on a hammer. And seven hundred dollars on a well. Price. I remember when when we actually the government spent it was only in those days three hundred thousand dollars, which a lot of people considered extraordinary money, to test and to study the aerodynamic capabilities of the frisbee. I guess they figured they'd use it as a weapon of war or something like that, but unfortunately, it turned out the aerodynamic capabilities of frisbee were kind of erratic and came to no good. But we spent three hundred thousand dollars to find that out. That's you know. Yes, it, 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 uh, you kind of look, Tom, like you want to say something. Oh well, uh, getting back to the Korean thing, uh, you know, like that's the one thing that that uh, that the uh, 
North Koreans always make a fuss out of is is the is the uh, you know the military exercises, and and so in a way I was wonder if that 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 was that's what they're using as their out you know or at least the the, the game that that uh, Un is playing with with uh, with uh, Trump see how bad Trump really wants to to look good in this situation is he willing to give in and. Uh, so we'll see. Wait a your mic was something wrong with your microphone there. Sorry. Yeah, it, it's it. It might be. This might be the part of the test to see uh, how much Trump is willing to give in. So, that Do, are you putting your hand or something over your microphone? I don't have it. Oh, about the big. Uh, Maybe your pants or something. I, oh, oh, I think uh, I might be having some slowness in my connection. No, that's not it. It's like you're muffled. Yeah. Muffled. Yeah, and then when you move something, the muffling goes away. Maybe it, maybe the microphone is being covered by your clothes, your pants or something. Now 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 we don't hear anything. I don't know, he's muted, yeah. <laughs> now, now talk. Hey, how about now? Now yes. yeah, there. What was it? Where where's your microphone? It's like off my lap. <laughs> what? What? Maybe. Where, where's your microphone? I'm assuming it's up by the. Uh, it's up up by the my camera. Huh. He's using the computer one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, uh, oh, oh, wait a yeah. minute. You're making us dizzy. Oh. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our recreation of the Titanic. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Or like that, oh. one of those bad Star Trek episodes where, oh, <laughs> oh, they're firing on us. Yeah. Ah. And then everybody runs to one side and then they run to the other side. Yeah, that was <laughs> cheap special effects. That's why we right. like those shows. We liked them because they were cheesy. Hello, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Yes, it's Jeff. And he's at his home in Connecticut. That's right. That almost blew up today. It almost blew up? Why? What? Well, we had some kind of crazy wind. And uh, didn't you get any of that? We, I, I heard the wind. Uh, it, uh, I was out, and it was really nice. It was really nice, and the temperature was about 82. And then I come right. home, and I listen to our courtyard, and there is wind blowing through there like crazy. Then all of a sudden, like this dark cloud just comes over New York City. Uh, mm -hmm. And 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 uh, we then have a rainstorm that is quite profound. And then there was one clap of thunder that's the weirdest clap of thunder I've ever heard in my life. It just was like, you know, the boom, and then it kept rumbling and rumbling and rumbling and rumbling and rumbling and rumbling and rumbling. Welcome to Texas. Yeah, I know. I was going to say Texas. I know. Except we're in Connecticut. You're not supposed to do that kind of stuff. And my wife is out there in, in the car. And she has, she has to go inside a store because it's too dangerous to drive. Wow. It was very strange. And then when the rain stopped and the wind stopped, now there's wood uh, from trees all over the place and it took a three hours to get home which which would be half an hour speaking of flash storms yeah. a girlfriend decided she had to go to her storage locker which in those days was deep in the depths of new jersey it's so about a two-hour mm -hmm. drive to her locker oh. and then she's as long as we're here there's this big shopping mall you know really nice mall let's go to it and so i said okay so we go to it and it's uh, it's kind of one of these malls. It's got a bunch of stores and it's got a hill. Okay, and the top of the hill there are more stores and more outlets. So we go to the top of the hill and we do some shopping on all these things. And all of a sudden, it starts to pour. Like you know, Noah's Ark had to be built to get ready for this goddamn thing. It was just this immediate giant deluge. So we say, well, let's get back to the car. And we start going down to the car. And all of a sudden, all this water is rushing down the hill. Okay. And uh, we're running to get to the car. And, and there is so much water, I slip 
and fall oh, on oh. my ass and just the water oh. is rushing over me. Oh my. And girlfriend is standing there laughing her fucking ass off. <laughs> <laughs> like there was no tomorrow. And she laughed so hard, she, she fell. fell off kilter and fell in the water herself. Uh, now, you should have had a video of that. I am drenched. I mean, totally drenched. And I don't know, what am I going to do? I can't, I can't even get in the It's a rental car to begin with. I was going to say, whose car? Okay, well, yeah, it was like a, like a zip car or one of those things. You know, uh -oh. One of those deals, right? So I uh, uh, it blows off. It's, so no, so I I go into the gap, and I say I need to buy some clothes. And they look at me, and I, I look, I just I'm drenched from head to toe. And I finally <laughs> I bought some clothes there, and I managed to carefully get across the street and get back into the get into the car. And uh, a Marjorie, I think, somehow decided to stay wet. I, I, I don't understand why, but I, it was so funny when I fell and she laughed her fucking head off and laughed so hard that she then fell from laughing too hard. So that's my torrential rain story. So I know what your wife's going through. Yeah. You know, when it happens, it happens. Okay. I mean, yes, uh, Patrick. I had a uh, doctor's appointment last week that I had to cancel because mm -hmm. we had torrential rain and it didn't start until I got to the hospital park yeah. and it's an outside uh, parking lot yeah. and I couldn't even get the damn door open and for me getting wet in the rain is fine if I'm at home. But if I'm going to an appointment or something like that. Yeah. So I ended up calling from the parking lot and canceling the appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, because one, I couldn't get the damn door open because the wind and the mm -hmm. rain was so hard. And I thought my wheelchair would literally blow away uh, in this. And then the lightning started on top of it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to die for a fucking uh, doctor's appointment. So, right. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah, well, anyway. So, um, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, you know, I, I got this new, uh, this new prescription thing through my union, uh, Express Scripts. And when I first time we got it, I got a 90-day supply for 216 bucks. Of all my drugs, a 90-day supply. So today I go in to get my next 90-day supply, and guess what? The price is now yes. down to $186 because I had to pay, an, you know, the, the the minimum or whatever the thing is uh, before. So I'm paying less per month for all my prescriptions for per six three months than I was paying for one month. I'm saving. Almost five thousand dollars a year. Oh, so I guess I lucked into a good insurance thing. Anybody here have Express Scripts or use it or hear of it? I never heard of it in my life, and then they wound up on sixty minutes a couple of weeks ago for something bad they did. And they said they're the largest uh, prescription drug uh, dispenser in the country. They have. Like, I don't know, 200 million. I don't know how many people that are signed up with them. So, uh, you know, I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. It's nice to not spend the money we're spending, right? You know. But anyway. How much, do you have, huh? how much do you have to pay to be a member of the union? The union, do, the union uh, every three months is well i don't have to pay any money to be in the union because i am now a senior member and we i don't have to pay dues any longer and um uh, uh i uh the every three months we have to give them what is it 538 dollars and her bit her company pays for it 
So it's about two thousand dollars a year for really a great, and that's just for the prescriptions. Yeah. I mean, we also get the medical and everything. You know, it's a supplemental to Medicare. So whatever, it's just it's great. I feel very blessed. It's the only thing I ever got out of that fucking union, except occasional <laughs> residual checks. <laughs> to this day, I get like residual checks for three dollars. <laughs> Thank God I. You know, I don't have any great love for Bill Maher, but damn it, uh, he's made me a lot of money over the years because they keep running his special on HBO, his old special that I'm the announcer on. And so, like, every once a year, I get at least a $71 check from Bill Maher's uh, perform my performance on Bill Maher's show. Uh, I just wish he'd run some of the other ones. But if you get a chance, go go to HBO, go and go to One Night Stand and look up Bill Maher, and it's the oldest special he has there. And that's my me. That's my voice. So I, I do remember. That's the incident. Do you ever hear me talk about the incident with Bill Maher that I had with him? You've heard this story, right, Scott? Have you heard it, uh, uh, Tom? And yeah, we've all heard it. You've all heard it. Then I won't tell it. <laughs> and now everybody, everybody out there who hasn't heard the story is listening and saying, "But wait a minute, we didn't hear it. Tell us." Yeah, no, they're all saying we heard the story, Alex. We heard the story. Really? Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's a story I can't tell anymore because I've told it so many times now. <laughs> Let's see. Then it goes like Bill Moore. Uh, you can follow my ass, or oh, what is something? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Uh, no. Uh, oh yeah. Do you do you do political stuff? Not on my. No. He. he yeah. He asked quickly, just for people who've never heard the story before. I'm doing the one night stand with Bill Maher, and he calls me into, uh, and I do the the warm up with the audience, yeah. and he says to me, uh, "I understand you do the warm up." I say, "Yeah." He said, "Do you do any political material?" And I say, "Yeah." Well, you know, I asked them like, "How many of you here voted for Bill Clinton or whatever, whoever the president was at the time?" And they, they, they cheer, and therefore we get a little, you do it so that you get the applause, you get the laughter, you get all those things that they can wild track later on in case they have to fill in somewhere. And uh, he says, don't do political. Yeah, I said, why? He said, I do political. I said, I hear you're making $20,000 for this show. I, I said, I'm making three hundred. Follow me, motherfucker. And I walked out. Yeah. So, that, not, these people are not laughing because they've heard the story so many times. It's got a beard on it. But you know. <laughs> well, what I'm what I'm I'm puzzled out. You, you said people are still watching it. They're watching this 20 year old show where the president. Yes. <laughs> it's like. Well, what time does it air? Like three no, in the morning. No, no, you have to go to like HBO Go, and then they have like an under their comedy section a lot of their old comedy shows and some of them are the one night stands and i did the i announced the first year uh and uh, there unfortunately there weren't many comics in that first year that lasted long enough to ha to still keep running those shows but bill maher who has a show on hbo anything they've got on him they put in there and run so anyway thank you bill maher for you know for sending me 71 dollars a year don't know what it pays for. It doesn't pay for much. That's for damn sure. How do your prescription for one, one quarter? Uh, yeah, one bill. Yeah, uh, 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 subscription bill. For, for what? For one quarter. You you said you get it every for a three month supply. So seventy one dollars pays about half of. No, it pays one, about a third. Yeah, for one uh, one. Uh, <laughs> one that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventy-one bucks a year. But you know something? It's funny that over the years, if I added up all the money I made off those silly little residuals, which when they come in, you go oh, another thirty-four dollars here, and ten, ten, twenty thousand dollars. You know, so not bad for one night's work, or actually one day's work. They flew me down to L.A. to and that do the openings on it. So. I mean, I did them when we were doing the shows live, but they wanted a better, they didn't get the audio just right. So they flew me down to L.A., and I, 
the limousine picks me up and I go to the studio and I go, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Maher. And then the next <laughs> one, ladies and gentlemen, I can't remember who the rest of them were. Oh, yeah, what's her name? The woman that used to be on The on the View. Uh, oh, Joy, Joy Behar. Behar. Yeah. Uh, she, she did one of them. Uh, and uh, I got to know the guy who was the producer of the show. He used to be one of Sel Ed Sullivan's producers. And um, I, I got to know him pretty well. And we were sitting there and we're watching Joy Behar doing her act. And I said, uh, she's pretty terrible. And he said, yeah, I know. I said, then why are you doing a half hour with her? And he says, well, you know, you got to play politics. I said, what is this, the young agent special? He says, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but she was terrible. She was just ghastly. In fact, as a matter of fact, she fucking still is. Oh. <laughs> I've never seen her be funny. You know, so. Yeah, it, it, when I want to view, and I, I have on occasion, mm -hmm. I find Whoopi Goldberg just to be funny or yeah. to be smart with quips um and she always has been i find her to be entertaining but joy behar you're right it's like my next door neighbor trying to be funny and right it, yeah you know. yeah no no but you're right you're absolutely right about uh about whoopi i mean very very funny woman you know uh and uh uh she and, and, and to her credit She's lasted over the years. You know, she's managed to always find a new venue, whether it was going to Broadway or then going to TV and doing a talk show or whatever it took. Star Trek. Yes. Right? You know, yeah. uh, she has always worked. And, and, and by the way, can I add, because I don't say it that often about most people, very nice lady. Very, very nice lady. Yes, Patrick. And... She's diverse to be able to go between serious roles like the color purple and funny roles like uh, what was the nun thing that she did? Yeah, yeah. You know, and sister it, act. Yeah. Yeah, she kind of reminds me of when um, Robin Williams did like Good Morning Vietnam and so many other more serious roles. And even though he was a comedian, he was very fluid that way. And she's the same way. And, and she's still very relevant. Well, the thing most people don't realize is that comedians make good actors most of the time. And the reason is, is that comedy is the hardest kind of acting to do. Uh, and, and so when people are surprised that a comedian suddenly turns in a great dramatic performance, I'm never surprised because if they're a good comedian, they'll be a good actor as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and, and we've seen it happen over and over and over again, except with Amy Schumer. But that's another, <laughs> you know. Um, she was on Saturday Night Live and I fell asleep very quickly the only th I, the only thing i really laughed at was that thing about mommy what was it like the day i was born and she says it's the most wonderful was the most wonderful day in my life and then they cut to her in the operating room screaming and yelling motherfucker god damn it i'm, I'm in pain my vagina is gonna blow out you know? <laughs> and then it's and yes it was a wonderful day dear you know it was very, it was very funny it was very funny uh, you know, I think as a sketch performer, she's okay. You know, she, I, I'm not going to complain. I just, I just have watched her comedy act, and I have yet to figure out what she, but why she's funny. But maybe that's me. Maybe that's because I'm too old to, to get the kids' humor today, or maybe it's because her name is Schumer. Yeah, you know, that could be. Uh, the case. Yeah. You know, um, but. Um, um, so uh, a Melania Trump, by the way, in the hospital. Uh, does anybody believe the story? Yeah. 
I mean, I, look, I, you know, I had a kidney stone, and I was in the hospital for four and a half days and had been talking about it for seven and a half years now. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but you all remember when I went in, and that was for a kidney stone. She has gone in for another kidney thing, and it was just, I guess they had to, like, just blow something out or whatever, right? And she's in there for, going to be in there for like a week. Yes, Scott. I think they said that in a, in a normal person. Yeah. Like a two hour procedure and it's like, a, it's outpatient surgery or whatever. I mean, you're in and out the same day. Yeah. I guess if you have normal uh, insurance. Yeah. Not if you, not if you have this presidential insurance. Yeah, but but I mean, you're you're in and out of the hospital, and supposedly it's it's an out, what do they call it, an outpatient procedure. Yeah. And uh, she's in there for how many days? I mean, it isn't because she's the first lady, lady, or maybe the doctors just want to constantly look at her vagina. I don't know, but she you know. wants to be away from Trump. That's it. I think so. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Hello, uh, Kevin. Good evening. How you doing? Yeah. Do you find Melania Trump's illness uh, suspicious? Nah, I think they're just trying to keep an eye on her. And by the way, she went to the hospital on her own. He didn't go with her. Yeah. He, he said he went there when he had a chance. <laughs> when he had a chance. That's, when it th fit his schedule. Yeah. This is a guy who doesn't get her a, a, a wedding and a, 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 what a birthday. Was it a birthday present he missed or was it a wedding anniversary? Birthday. birthday. Yeah, birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you give the woman who has everything? In her case, a divorce. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No idea, but I, I, I just, I don't know. The whole story just didn't sit well with me. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't understand it exactly, because there are things like cysts in your kidneys, and there are tumors in the kidneys, and so on, and they have different ways of taking care of them. Most of it is not dangerous. Or a dangerous procedure so i don't know i don't even think you're in the hospital that long for a kidney transplant are you well i don't know i've never had one so yeah i mean i'd have to look it up but i, I mean the, I, the only reason i, I was get a whole new kidney for the, last time the only reason i was in the hospital for that long a time was they were waiting for the kidney stone to come out the minute it was the minute it flushed out, the minute I said, hey, I'm peeing blood, it was like they were rolling me out the front door, you know? Yep. <laughs> yes, Patrick. I, I know somebody who had a kidney transplant. They were in the hospital about a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. She had uh, that for a week. Yeah, his, uh, his sister gave him a kidney, and they were both in the hospital for, I think, four or five days. Yeah. And, and we're mainly to watch them. Um, Rejection? It, 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 it almost as if it could be outpatient, but it's a little bit more complex when you're dealing with transplanting organs. So they needed to yeah. get him on his uh, anti rejection med to make sure his body could handle it. And uh, so it was about four or five days, and then he went back to the hospital and to the doctor quite often just checking everything and it's been about 10 years now so he's doing fine yeah so but, yeah yeah the kidney transplants i hear are pretty they're easy peasy compared to other stuff you know and even heart transplants today people have them like crazy i mean what, what jeff what's the morbidity on on heart transplants these days it's not like it was right oh I People tend to, you know, last for another ten years easily. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, you know, the most difficulty is that first three months yeah. to make sure that your body is um, is, is, is accepting everything. Yeah. Now you have a mm -hmm. pump in you, right? I have a pacemaker. A pacemaker. Okay. Do you ever feel it or anything or? Uh, no. no, no, not these days. The older ones, yeah, but this stuff now. Uh, I, I used to be able the old ones, where people could hear it, 
and uh, they thought I had a fancy watch on or something like that. Oh, it wow. It so much noise. If you were sitting there by a, by a, a flat building, you know, or a flat table or something mm -hmm. like that, like it was heavy wood, because it would just, the, the, the sound would come off. I see, yeah, it, okay, it would vibrate, yeah. yeah. But now, yeah. what happens? You, uh, can you get near radar, uh, 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 microwave ovens, and things like that? Yeah, they still yeah, suck. yeah. All of that stuff is is uh, old, old style. Yeah. Okay. Everything, everything today works great. I, you know, when I go in the airport and all that kind of stuff, I just ignore. Them. Yeah, and, darling, and darling, I you made you made my heart skip a beat. No, I think it was the microwave. You know. <laughs> Yes, sir, Patrick. Um, I have a uh, high school classmate who had a heart transplant. It was right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And the difficult part for her was she went in the hospital in June. Yeah. And was in the hospital for about five months prior oh. to the transplant. And once the transplant took place, she was home within, I want to say, less than two weeks. Yeah. Uh, got her up and walking, and now she's doing fine. And like Jeff said, it's about the first three months. So uh, it's been mm. about four months now, and she's able to do a lot more, you know, taking walks and things like that. Yeah. But it was... It went hell on her for the first, like I said, it was like five months before the damn thing, just being there. And she was hooked up to all sorts of machines because her heart basically failed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had one guy uh, down the street here who had complete uh, lungs replaced with uh, other lungs from... Uh, had to be lungs. Okay. Had to be lungs from another person, right? Right, and uh, he looks fine. He just—I see him quite often. And he's just a—he looks great. Looks like a regular guy. Wow. Do you, I, I, do you have to get the both lungs from the same person? I would suspect so, because uh, it's a very difficult thing to get away. Oh. All. Yeah. Uh, your own anatomy to, to match mm -hmm. with yours, you know? That's got to be a hard one to go find a donor for. I know. think so. You I know, think I mean, uh, uh, it, it, it mean uh, literally, when, when they harvest people, boy, is this a morbid topic, but when people <laughs> die and they harvest you, when it's harvest yeah. time and the harvest moon is out, uh, <laughs> do they... Do they Really take everything that is usable, or do they, you know, like for instance, I guess if a guy was an alcoholic and died, they wouldn't take his liver for, as an example. But if he, if, if it was a fairly healthy person all the way around, I guess they could like harvest his lungs, his heart, his kidneys. Well, first of all, his well you have to agree to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you just can't. You just yeah. can't be that you're in the hospital and you happen to die, and they said, "Ah, look what we've got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. things are good. You gotta, Let's you gotta check them the off. box on your license. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be terrible though if you die and you find out there is really a heaven, but you can't get in unless you got all your original parts? <laughs> Give them back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my cornea are gone. Well, I'm sorry, we don't have any seeing-eyed dogs up here in heaven. You know, but. Uh, Although you would think there would be seeing eye dogs in heaven because they did a good deed, mm -hmm. you know. You, isn't that heart thought felt of me to say? Anyway, anyway hey, listen, um, we got a big, big wedding coming up this weekend. How many, how many people going to watch that? Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Uh, because more fun, gir because more gir fun watching all the drama with dad. Girlfriend. Well, I was going to get to that. Girlfriend already has the thing ready to record. She said she hasn't missed a single royal wedding or coronation since 1953 when Elizabeth was cor uh, uh, coronated. Is that the term? Uh, 
uh, Maid Queen. Uh, and, I remember seeing that. Huh? I saw that. Yeah, I've TV. watched every coronation since Nathan Lane was made queen. So, you know, <laughs> um, uh, but she, so she's going to watch it. She wants to watch it. And I'm going, that's okay. You know, what the hell? I, I have nothing better to do with my miserable fucking life than to sit there and watch two terribly rich people get married and I, well, that'll be what that'll be seven o'clock in the morning for you right is it is it that early here yeah i guess yeah so. there's yeah. like four o'clock in the morning well, here we, I, oh no wait it's probably four o'clock in the morning for you guys I, i'm gonna say cause it, it's about 3 a.m for me yeah it's gonna be one here well she's recording it okay yeah, i think well. it's seven o'clock in the morning here i don't know but anyway the thing is that uh number one i think harry's the luckiest guy in the world because uh, he doesn't have to become the king of england and i don't know that that's a consolation prize i think that's a curse you know here he gets all the things you get when you're with the royal family and he's you know he's the second royal heir uh at one point and 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 you know and all he has he can marry anybody he wants to he can marry a negro yeah. uh <laughs> you know he can marry a Schwarzer. Yes. what a party uh, you know us. now if if william wanted to marry a, a black woman uh don't you they would have gotten apoplectic but that's harry he's never going to become king let him be happy so he can marry anybody he wants to and he's marrying this absolutely beautiful woman uh who happens to be half half black and half trailer park trash. Have you seen that father? <laughs> Have you seen no. the father? I have not. Yeah. He's big. He, yeah, yeah. Surprise, surprise. He, he, made a quick he, he, grand. he can't go to the wedding. You know why? Because he's having a heart operation on Wednesday. <laughs> And if you see the picture of this guy, you go, he should have had a heart operation five years ago. I mean, he's just, he's really, as we call in the Jewish faith, a schlump. As he's uh, walking out of a KFC with a bucket of chicken. Yes, there's a picture of him walking out of KFC with a bucket of chicken. <laughs> So, so he, he originally he wasn't going to go to the wedding because of this whole dust up by the fact that the paparazzi paid him to take pictures. And then he found out today, because he had a heart attack eight days ago, that he's got to have a heart operation on Wednesday. Which would be terrible because if he dies during that operation, it's going to be a really shitty wedding for, uh, for you know, Markle, yeah. uh, Meghan Markle. So uh, this That's is getting awesome. to be really high drama without there any reason for there being high drama. But he could die, right, Phil? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Jeff, Phil. God. Oh. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, what, he, have a heart, he has a heart attack? and uh... He had a heart attack, and now eight days later he went to his doctor, and they said, well, you got to go in and have your heart fixed. <laughs> so, you know, but... Uh, but but you know, he, but he still weighs a fucking ton. I think that once they get all the lard out of there, immediately new lard is going to take its place. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, so I mean, I but I, uh, she's a beautiful woman, and uh, I wish her a very. But the happiest day of her life now is fraught with all kinds of crap. But you know. She won the big prize. Yes, Patrick. Uh, I would say he won the big prize because, remember, he was the ugly, red-headed kid for years. And look who he's marrying. Actually, yeah, I mean. Yeah, but, but he's not ugly like the rest of those troglodytes, those, no, those throwbacks, right. those inbred people in that family. He actually looks he he looks very good now. He's a kind of a hot guy, and um, you know, and he's marrying a hot woman, and it's everybody loves it, you know. It's, it, and and I think the fact, I, and a lot of people in England are very happy about the fact that she's half black, because they feel now that there's a real inclusion that the the people in England have with that family because she is there. <laughs> 
by the very virtue of her presence. And I think that's a very good thing. But, you know, look at the Duke of Windsor. He couldn't marry Wallace Simpson because she was an American divorcee. How many years ago was that? And now here's Harry. But, you see, he doesn't have to worry about it. He's now, he used to be second in line to the throne. He is now like, what, fourth, fifth, something like fourth. Yeah, he's down the road. Well, there's three other kids. There are four kids. There's, there's William. Then there are the three kids. And then uh, there's Six. Harry. So he's, what? Fifth down the line, something like that. Yeah. So anyway, he uh, he he's he's got it pretty good. He just gets to sit around and, you know, cut the tape at bridge openings and things like that, you know, and and go home with a very, I think, attractive, intelligent, accomplished woman. Uh, uh, I mean, we've we've lost a great actress, uh, but you know. Great. Well, we did what we did when we when we how about how about Grace Kelly. Yeah, you yeah. know, you know her. It's so Meghan Markle's mom divorced Meghan Markle's dad when she was like two. We mean so the mother she, was two. Boy, that was a young marriage. No, when no. Meghan was two. <laughs> when Meghan so was she, two, so she realized he was a jackass really early in the relationship. Yeah, she got rid of him. <laughs> but it looks like they, she and her father have a fairly good relationship. There are pictures of them being very cozy and cuddly, and you know she Had? She, she supposedly so loves. Is the mother her, no, the African American or is the the mother is African American? The, what? She's very she's very African American. Yeah. Yeah, it's the mom. But you know, and she's going to the wedding, so it's going to be really cool to. Well, okay, so she's probably gonna she's probably gonna walk her down the aisle. Well, she has to I, because he the only way I, he's gonna walk her down the aisle is if they run an ambulance up to the chapel or whatever. No, no. The only way if she wants him, she just has to pay him. He's that kind no, of. A no, 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 ass. no. He's having a heart operation on Wednesday. Yeah, and Melania is in the hospital for a week for a surgery that shouldn't take that long. My guess is somebody, Michael, whatever that lawyer's name is, is about to drop a big ass bomb, and she doesn't want to be anywhere near it. You mean Michael Cohen? No, Michael and Drotty and oh, the okay. lawyer Stormy yeah, Daniels. Not, yeah, oh, not, not yeah, so he's not about not to not probably it. somebody's about to drop something big, and the safest place for Melania is in the hospital. Well, yeah, but she That's can't pretty stay. Good theory. She, I didn't think of that. One. She can't stay in there forever, you know. Well, she's got a whole week, so my guess is something's going to drop. It's pretty she'd big. She'd get all drugged up in there, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's the safest place for her. <laughs> wow. Really. Yeah, wow. That's but it. I agree with you. They didn't, I mean, I only know more kidney stuff because of Marty, but they weren't really forthcoming on a lot of the kidney stuff. But we both know that when you go in there into the inside of a kidney and start removing nodes and stuff like that, the kidney gets, like, super pissed off. And so it's a lot of pain for multiple days because you've just pissed it off so badly. Well, I pissed off my kidney and it, it uh, you know, I mean. It, it had a fit, didn't it? It had a little fit. It had a little fit. <laughs> well, I have it some. It your ass to the hospital. <laughs> I have cysts in there. I have cysts in my kidneys. But most, a lot mm -hmm. of people my age do have cysts in their kidneys. It's not unusual. No, but so and and they don't always need to be removed. But no. if they do go in there and even just well, because they use a laser, so they have to cauterize it, kind of thing to it. If they would use a scalpel, it would probably have less of a reaction. But they're not in there with a scalpel, so using the laser really seems to piss the inside of a kidney off. Yeah. Yeah, and that's probably true for all of our organs. I just know the kidney part. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff. I once had a, a, a kidney problem that was the most painful thing oh, yeah. in my whole oh, yeah. life. And what, what it really was was just a clot. Yeah, yeah. My, and, my, and mine was, mine was just a stone, but it just started to hurt. I mean, they had to give me the lot, you know, constantly shoot me up. But yeah, also, I don't know what it is, but when you put something foreign in... in and I don't know if this is true. For, who had not a kidney stone, but a liver stone or something? Somebody Patrick had something. had a bladder stone. That's it. So, Patrick, do you think that the what you know about a bladder stone, is it just as pain, uh, just as harmful inside the bladder as it is inside the kidney? Oh, it, 
it, I can tell you, and I may have said this, but I kept wetting myself for five weeks until I had the surgery oh, wow. because the, the bladder stone is a lot like a kidney stone. It's not round, it's just a jagged thing. Yeah, it looks like an and asteroid. It bounced around in the bladder, it would spasm the, the walls yeah. Finding in a bladder. Well, here we go. We just lost all yeah. our young listeners. Uh, well, see, that goes back to the same thing. If you're scr- and I don't know about Jeff, you've had a lot of heart surgeries. It's probably the same thing for you. Stop screwing with the stuff that isn't supposed to have us inside, <laughs> because it really gets it really pisses these things off. And you can't blame it. Nothing's supposed to be in there except yeah. the, the the heart surgery these days. It's only done through a catheter it's like yeah you're, you're in and out in, in a few uh in, in an hour and then you recover for maybe yeah two days or even one day how do so we, my how do, how do cardiologist we... said that if you run a marathon like iron man you are putting your body through the same recovery process as if you had open heart surgery so it takes a year to recover from the surgery. It'll full. It'll take your body almost a year to recover from that kind of a, a event, yeah. which I was really surprised. Never I first, one of those. <laughs> I, well, uh, open heart surgery. I was at home for three months. Oh. Yeah. What year was that? <laughs> Sorry. That was. Uh, 45 years ago or so. Because, see, I remember about 20 years, the first time I had ever seen somebody uh, with open heart surgery, They he showed me the scars. It was slit from here to here, and he was da-da-da-da-da, and that was 20 years ago. They don't do it like that anymore. Well, no. I, I, I had to stay home for two months once. For? Uh, nothing. I just stayed home for two months. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. So. yeah. So, you know, we've gotten better with our surgeries and stuff like that. It's just that our bodies are bodies and they have to recover in the method. Wait a minute. That they Let me write that recover. one down. Our bodies are bodies. Okay. Sorry. I got to write that one down. I got to remember that. It goes that. to the point where all you idiots who'd ride motorcycles. First off, if you want, I, I think the, the law in the United States should be, you can go without a helmet on a motorcycle anywhere in the United States, as long as you sign a donor card. I, I don't care. You can go helmet free. As long as you've signed a donor card. Let me change the subject. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Renee Smith. Our, our, our good president, in his wisdom, uh, has decided to help bail out a Chinese company. Saw that. Now, how does this go along with his trade thing? You mean make China great again? Uh, oh, uh, uh, no, I mean... Was. Uh, it's a Z. I can't remember the name of it. Z T E. Z T E. And that helps out that Indonesian company of his, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know about that. Tell me, Kevin. What? What? What don't I know here? It has something to do with an Indonesian company that Trump owns over there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I they, don't know the details of it, but I I, I heard because, background stuff of that. Because he said we're not going to do trade with any company that does business with Iran. Well, guess who does business with Iran? ZTE? Z- ZTE. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you yeah. know, hello, Ray Renati. How are you this evening? Uh, hey, Ray. Yeah, all of a sudden, he's, you know, all, hey, this is Mr. We're going to clamp down on trade and we're going to you know, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to have tariffs and the hell thing. Oh, by the way, uh, while we're at it, we're going to bail out a Chinese company. Because we, we everybody Scott? who wants a job in the United States has a job. Scott has his hand up. What's Scott? Do you know why there were sanctions against ZTE? Be- I don't remember. Because of Iran, right? Because they were doing business no. with Iran. No. It's a, I believe it's a Chinese mobile phone company. Yeah. yeah. And they use components that they can actually 
spy on U.S. people and military. Yes. The, the, the this this cell phone was banned from all military commissaries or wherever you might be. Yeah. Oh, near, because near, uh, they were tracking it. Because yeah, they're listening in. They got so he's helping the Chinese spy, which is associated with Russia. Yes. Yeah. He's a traitor. <laughs> I am a traitor. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can Sorry. hear you, Ray. Okay. Yeah, I got the new update of Windows 10, and it's all screwed things up. Okay. Oh, of course. Thanks. Every time, every time <laughs> I, I, I did that the other day, and uh, among other things, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any sound out of the computer, and it's because it muted my, my speakers when it came back yeah, that, online. That's what just happened right now. Yeah. Change yeah. the settings. Yeah. It changes all my settings. I have to go in before the show and make sure all the settings for the show are right uh, because, yeah. it, 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 you know, uh, the only thing that's worse than Microsoft, at least when Microsoft does an update, it takes maybe, what, 10 minutes, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever done it? Any of you have Macs out there? Raise your hands, okay? Raise mm -hmm. your hands. Okay, you all got Macs. How long does it take you to do a normal update with a Mac? <laughs> I don't usually know. I get up, go get coffee. And, and go, go get coffee, then go to the store, <laughs> maybe go out and see some friends for dinner and come back, and maybe it'll be finished doing the update. Yeah. And then you have to sign in, and maybe it'll let you sign in. I've had this, I had this thing where for months it wouldn't let me sign in, and then all of a sudden it worked. It was like, what the really? hell, man? Though I have Never to had say a problem. I have to thank everybody. I switched to Chrome, and even on the Mac, it's much more stable. So, Kevin, you might want to try to download this. You mean I've never had the a web problem. browser? The, the browser? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, what I Chrome use web browser. Safari yeah. just drives me crazy. Oh, no, I gave up on Safari. Really? <laughs> so th that's what Apple people know. You have to have Safari, and you better out and go out and get I, I use Safari so to monitor this show, but I do everything else with uh, Chrome. You know, I, I'm impressed. I'm really it's fast. It's 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 non glitchy. None of the problems I have with Safari. I come even close with in Chrome. So, yeah. So, Kevin, you might want to download that one as your second. Yeah. But, I've never but had really everybody. many problems with Safari either. I, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe and, I just I just find don't... Safari isn't as sophisticated as Chrome. Chrome is pretty sophisticated. Uh, I, I don't have to worry about any of the apps, all, any all, extensions. Also, None all of, the Chromes that I have, whether it's on the uh, on the PC or whether it's on my Macs here or my Mac in the other room, uh, all of them look alike. They all have the same tabs. Everything, okay. you know, they all talk to each other, which uh, it, it, it's as things should be, you know. Um, Across platforms. Yeah. You would think that Apple would do better than that, you know. T tell you what, what happened, though. i got to tell you something uh, that bothers me. Here, here, What's bothering you, Alex? Is something bothering you? You're so non-bothered by things. Oh, okay. Well, that's bothering me. So I subscribe to this thing called Audio Blocks. And Audio Blocks is what supplies the music we use here on GabNet. It's royalty-free if you pay them 150 bucks a year and you get all all the music you want and you can use it forever it's you, you you buy it you know you use the service you download it you get to use it forever okay well occasionally i don't know they got some kind of deal where they buy something from somebody but that person also has themselves listed with with uh, with uh, uh, youtube and then I'll get a thing that says, this is a copyrighted piece of music. And I'm going, no, I paid for this fucking piece of music. So mm -hmm. then I got to write them and make a complaint. And then I write, I, I write uh, 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 audio blocks and I say, hey, you know, they stopped me. I'm one of the pieces of music I bought from you guys. Go get them because they always go do it for me, right? Sorry, mm -hmm. we can't do that anymore. But if you want to pay another $49 a month to get the premium <laughs> service, we will do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to be sure not to use audio blocks. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it, they're, they're, they're very good and it's very useful. So I paid the other 49 bucks. And I'm 
Yeah. Wow, forty nine dollars a okay, month. So, but I also get to add people to my my subscription, like four well, other for people. For fuck's sakes, add everybody. Well, I added Rob <laughs> because Rob does all the promos okay. on the on the network. But uh, yeah, you know, if anybody, if, any, I, if anybody, I use Yahoo's free service. They have a bunch that's free. And um, YouTube, and, YouTube does have. Uh, if, yeah. if you have a piece of music that's bad, I meant or YouTube. Whatever. Sorry. Yeah, YouTube yeah. has free music you can use. And sound effects. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, it's never appealed to me particularly. It's never yeah, there's not a lot of. There's, it's not the quality this, that this, you have with is, audio. This blocks. is pretty deep. And then I subscribe to their video blocks, which is the way I get all the visuals, for instance, like for the Gabnet logo, the background, and all of that. So. You know, I mean, it. it, it you know, I, I pay out about three hundred bucks a year for royalties and things like that. But that's not bad. That's not bad. No, it's not terrible. But still, I don't like getting upsold like that. You know, I bought the thing originally, and they said, "Hey, we'll take care of it whenever there's a problem." And now they say, "We won't take care of it when there's a problem unless you have our premium service." Well, fuck you. <laughs> so fuck rude. you. I wrote them a fuck you letter, and they wrote me back and said, too bad, you got to pay us the 49 bucks, or we won't do it for you. We'll do it for you in this case. And they did it, and, the you know, the the uh, copyright violation was gone the same day. They got it done. You know, so. Uh, but I hate being told, you know, I go out and I make sure my music doesn't have copyright violation, and then I get YouTube saying, it's a copyright violation. <laughs> so, anyway, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about, and I can't remember what it was now. Uh, but um, uh, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I guess I've run out of stuff to talk about. Yes, a, a Tom maybe has something. Would it be about the big death today? Oh, you mean Tom Wolf? Yeah. Yeah, Tom uh, Wolf died. That's yeah. sad. He was. He's a plus. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. But you know, how old was he? Eighty-eight, something like that. Was oh, at 87. 87. So, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I, oh, it's so bad, sad he died. Oh, my regrets <laughs> to his family. I mean, the guy was 88 for crying out loud. I don't know a lot of people there. I'll be happy if I live to be 88, you know. But he did good. I mean, what do you, you know, he, he made an impact, whether you like the subject matter, he made a very large impact on the American psyche. Well, he also, he also created a kind of, uh, journalism you know yeah uh, of of sorts because most of the stuff he wrote about were were true situations i mean you know the right stuff which is a great book uh the uh, uh, uh vanity bonfire of the vanities which was about a real case that happened here in new york and he was just he was a great writer when he wrote he did it took him about eight years to write every book but you know uh and uh, but I think when he decided to write a new book is whenever he ran out of white suits, you know. So. <laughs> that was his, that was his trademark. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, so let's see here. We took care of Meghan Markle. Uh, we took uh, the weddings coming up. Uh, oh, I'm gonna watch. I know this is this is not a Renee thing, but I'm a, gonna watch. It's and a basically yeah. you watch for the fashion. So I want to see all the hats. I want to see the faux pas hats and the good hats. I hope they're I not going to have those. Uh, I hope those two sisters are not going to wear those goofy hats again. Everybody's going to wear a hat. It's a hat event. Yeah. P uh, Patrick. I know Patrick's going to be watching. Yeah. You're going to wear your hat? <laughs> and Renee can watch it live. <laughs> yeah. See, he's got a hat. That'll work. Uh, well, That's ours. No, wait a minute. Yeah, she, because he has this gotta be over here, right? Wait a minute. It'll be on what in the evening for you, right? Uh, yeah, it'll be like prime time for me. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, uh, we uh, give us the latest report. How's things in your on the Big Island with uh, 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 the Kilauea is about ready to blow her fucking stack, isn't she? Okay, so thank you for your first call out in your short in your Alex shorts. And then for the second call out, wait a minute, wait, let's clear that me. up. I, it's not Alex <laughs> Shorts, okay? Breaking news. Uh, breaking Thank news. Uh, Alex Shorts has something else involved in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the first call out, thank you for that. The second call out where I did the, the weather report, I don't know. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was not. 
I don't see. I never go back and watch. Well, people myself, said people wrote me and said, "Are you going to do traffic?" And I thought, "Well, I do have somebody who can do weather." And I weather. and I played that <laughs> clip of you uh, doing the weather. So I also don't like to hear my voice on this show oh, too. But see. Alex says that's kind of normal for people. Yeah, um, it takes a while to get used to it. Yeah. Well, you got yeah. a nice voice, so that. Well, uh, I had a temper tantrum on 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 there, so that's cool. Yeah, he I showed yeah, him at his I showed him at his forever his, now. Yeah, great. Yeah, <laughs> but at least, at least you made the clip of the day, you know. Hey, I mean, if you got <laughs> that's the one way to make it. Just there you go. lose your shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you like those little short things I'm doing? I love yeah. them. Yeah, they're really? great. It's good. good. I think they're great. And I'll keep I love doing a little this. commentary after everything. I mean, I I, I don't have. Uh, I, I don't have as many. Yesterday, I had like over th about 350 people watch. Yeah. Huh? You yeah. know, which uh, it, compared to this is, you know, it's a hit show. But today, it's mm -hmm. only up to uh, 156, and then there's like about another 50 on the other. So it's about over 200. So it's still good, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think when people see something is under 15 minutes, yeah. they're more likely to listen. Right. I agree with that. Right. Yeah. Scary as that sounds, it's, you know, this whole six second, six minute thing is, is our attention span is getting shorter and I don't think that's a good thing. Well, with the short attention span theater that I'm doing here, uh, it, it certainly proves the point, you know, I, 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 and let's be honest, I mean, people, if they want to watch this, have to watch a whole two hours. Yeah, you know, no, that, that's a good point. Where with too. that one, if they know it's going to be six to eight minutes. I may even put the time of each one in the title so that people can see that it's short. You know, actually, all you really need to do is put if it's feel free or not, and you probably get more people watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, Phil. Yeah. Well, tomorrow's <laughs> clip is Will Durst, so you know none of you have to worry about the. Uh, and you didn't let Durst talk political commentary as much as you normally do well if he wants to i don't you know i don't push him to do it you know and um uh, but he's interesting in any event so yeah you know. oh big time but so. he's so intelligent and did you hear he said he was trying to read the iran treaty i was like oh my god <laughs> i was like okay I didn't even crack that. So it was it was interesting to hear him. Yes, uh, Ray. Yeah, I had a thought, and I don't know if this is good or not, but what if um, Will overlapped into the citizens panel? Just he pro I'm sure he wouldn't want to be here the whole time, but just for part part of it. There's several reasons why not. Okay. Number one, he works. At, he works at night. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the fact of the matter is, we record these things. Uh, like at noon, okay. uh, and uh, I tried using a guest with the citizen panel on a couple of occasions, and it just didn't work. Yeah, you know, because either the citizens panel keeps quiet, in deference to the person I've got as a guest, or the guest is quiet, in deference to the citizens panel, and it just it does. Yes, Scott. Or Phil will ask stupid questions. Yeah, well, that's the other problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's gonna be who? Who's gonna want to be on it? All, yeah. We're the only ones we'll put put up with them. So that, that's why I keep most of those interviews to myself, rather uh, okay. than put people on with uh, with the. And it's not that you guys are bad or anything. It just for some reason it throws the balance off. Yeah. Uh, and I've never been able to figure out a way of, of making it work. Plus, most, as I say, most of these people that I want to, I'd like to have on, do work at night. You know, so it it, it makes it uh, it makes it difficult. Um, yeah, you were you were talking to your ex-wife, and you said after this, I'm going to Costco, and I'm like, oh man, this is like an 8 a.m. show. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. Yeah. But, um, well, that's why I disappear for long periods of time, and probably will be even more so because I work at night. So, yeah, what are you doing now? Well, I, my my play ended, but you know, I, I usually have more work, but I had that concussion, so uh, I could I couldn't you know audition a lot or anything. But hopefully, they'll turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Did you get a new agent? 
You said you were looking no, for No, I have, I have to get a new agent. It's not e I thought it would be easier than this since I had one for 20 something years, but the, the four that I contacted didn't even get back to me. What happened to your agent? She retired. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Tonry, Mary Tonry up here. She retired. I, I started with her when she started and then she retired. Well, how dare she do that to you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I, I hope looking for young. People. I hope you find daytime work, okay? That's what <laughs> I hope and pray. Daytime work, stuff that will suddenly let you be, oh, home by six o'clock. How's that? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, a good. Yeah. It's because we'd hate to lose you on the citizens panel, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious if 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 Ray would we would be willing to talk a little bit about his uh, head damage. That he's uh, concussion. Sure. I mean, I, I uh, if you want me to. Sure. I mean, I, I, I had, I had. Um, I used to play water polo in college, so I, I think I had a number of concussions just from the ball hitting me <clears> in the head a bunch of times. Yeah. And then I started doing uh, Muay Thai kickboxing about ten years ago, and um, I think I was just too old for sparring, and so I had a, I had a concussion about a year and a half ago. And then I had uh, post-concussion syndrome. And then my doctor told me to stop sparring. And of course, I didn't listen to her. And I went back and I got another one. And then I had post-concussion syndrome three times as bad as the first time. Um, really? Post-concussion syndrome is uh, people over 50, women, uh, if you have PTSD, uh, your chances are much higher of getting it. And it... it it, you can have emotional issues, you can have uh, memory problems, headaches, sleep problems, all kinds of weird mental shit. And I'm finally over it. it took like How eight long months. Did it, yeah, I was going to ask you, what was that time period? It takes like three months to a year. 90% uh, uh, of the people get over it in between three months and a year. It took me about eight months this time. So your doctor didn't say stop getting hit in the head? She did, but, but I didn't listen. And I went back and got hit in the head. But you don't and know. I any... was, I'm good at sparring, but the problem is I can't take a punch anymore. I cannot. I cannot even take a light hit in the head. No issues even light. of CTE or nothing. Huh? No issues of CTE or anything like that. I had. I had scans. You mean? Yeah. Oh, CTE. You mean that really bad disease? Yeah. Like oh no, player. I don't have that. No, it's just it's just post concussion syndrome from a mild brain injury. How about mad cow yeah, disease? You have that, mad cow disease that, at all? No, I don't have that either. <laughs> yes, Scott has up mad later, cow you know, disease. You gotta watch that. No, I know. That's why I'm not doing it anymore. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it. That, Jesus, that'd be like hell. That's you're like just, worrying you're, about but Alzheimer's. You're just really a sporting guy. Well, I mean, uh, you're a friend like, of mine is going. A friend of mine's going through that with uh, ALS. He fell off a truck. Yeah, he probably had a really bad head injury. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he fell off a 13 no, uh, no, mine was, truck. Yeah, see, that's yeah. different. See, I had a mild uh, mild brain injury. So you can get, like, really bad post-concussion syndrome from a super mild brain injury. It has nothing to do with the severity of the brain injury. Really? Yeah. And, and are you up on are you up on they're even saying that they don't want you to no longer in soccer do they want you to head the ball as a practice? Yeah, because what, as when kids so what, that's probably what happened to me. So I played water polo in high school and college and then after college and I got hit in the head with the ball a bunch of times. Saw stars a isn't bunch that, of times isn't back that, then. Isn't that nobody a so cared? Isn't that a soft no. ball? Uh, I mean, compared no, to... No, it's not soft. No. <laughs> no, it's blown up just as hard, harder than a soccer ball. It's blown up like like a... It's almost as hard as a softball. Really? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, hmm. not, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's like a basketball hard. Don't... And uh, don't it's soccer... The head it's minute, is it mine? Am, am I wrong? Uh, don't soccer players uh, hit the ball with their head? That's what I was just yeah, talking about. Yeah, this was about. water polo I played. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... It's got to yeah. be terrible. I mean, when they talk they, about uh, uh, sports injuries, soccer players must really have them badly. They've yeah. done this study now, and that they, they are not allowing kids under the age of X to use he, to do headers anymore. That's yeah. good. And they don't want them doing header practice either. But football's still a problem because it's almost impossible not to hit your head. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to develop helmets that actually absorb the shock, but it's super hard to do that because your brain still moves around, you know? Yeah. So but, uh, yeah, they're cumulative. So that's why the kids, they don't want kids doing it anymore. Because if you say you get uh, five, six concussions when you're a kid, well, you get over it real quick. But when you get older, your body still retains the the, wow. the, the symptoms of that concussion. Exactly. And so if you get another that's, one, that's f you're more likely to have big problems. That's fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, the, the problem Cumulative. is, you know, the, the parents really want their kids to go out and do sports in school and so on and so forth. But we're beginning to find out that at that age, it's not a good idea. Right. You know, go take a hike. A lot of parents nowadays are pulling their kids out of the sport. So. Mm -hmm. You want your kids to be athletic. Teach them to hike. Teach them to do stuff that is is aerobic and non impactive. No, I mean, should, football should just be gotten rid of. Oh, completely. I mean, I mean that's, that's that's a that's bad. Well, that's wait a minute. Hold on a second, Ray. What would you do about all the profits from gambling? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, about, well, it's the same thing like guns. It's like uh, you I know, mean, let's face don't it. Take our let's football. face it. Most of these sports are popular and are promoted and so on because they know people are betting on them. And yeah. now with the Supreme Speaking Court of ruling, gambling, with yeah, with yes, the, with the new gambling. Supreme Court ruling, if your state wants to have uh, bet gambling on on sports, sports. betting, uh, they can do it according to the Supreme Court. So you know. Another state's rights. Uh, huh? Uh, another state's right ruling, right? Well, yep. in a way, I kind of agree with that. You know, no, on the, on the it, other, uh, I, I think we've already done the studies saying that if you live in X amount oh, of distance oh, oh. from a casino, uh, you're more likely to be this poor. Well, and listen, if you live uh, further yeah, yeah, out, well, even the trouble is first. that I sit here in New York and I watch all these ads for New Jersey. And for this gambling stuff that you can do online, and I'm thinking about families who are losing everything because these people are playing online. And what and the state should have done was they should have said it's okay to do gambling online, but you have to put a limit on the bets, you know, right. and 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 a limit on how much a certain person can bet in a in a given month or a week or whatever, because I can see entire families, uh, you know going to the poor house because they've got these guys on television saying, hey, bet against real. Uh, um, in fact, the guy drives me crazy. He says, real uh, dealers broadcasted live. And I'm going, there is no such word as broadcasted. Uh, <laughs> you moron, you fucking idiot moron. Yes, Patrick, you got the last word here. I uh, took my mother to a concert a number of years ago at our we have a casino here in Milwaukee, and we just went to the concert, and as we were entering the building, there was a taxi cab with a lady who was getting in a wheelchair, and it was, it must have been Social Security Day, and knew that she was going in to blow her money, and it just made me sick, the, you know, yeah. it, it just the gambling, so. Yeah. Well, you know, that it's the way it is. I, I know people, I used to live in, in Reno, Nevada, and I know people who live in Reno, who people who live there don't gamble. They know that that's the worst thing they can possibly do or start doing. So locals do not gamble uh, for the most part. Anyway, hey, listen, there's the theme and everything. And gosh, it's been a nice night without somebody. Uh, <laughs> Scott Boddicker, thank you for calling. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Kevin. Ray Renati, I hope you keep calling forever. I'm hoping you I don't will. find work. Okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's not nice. That's my, that's my wish for you. Uh, uh, Tom, always thank you. He always calls whenever he hears Phil isn't going to be on. I think tomorrow night is also a Phil free night, too. So join us. Thanks, hey, Jeff. Thanks, Renee. Uh, say hello to uh, Madam Pele and everybody <laughs> give yourself uh, a wave goodbye to that wonderful studio audience uh, uh, live audience has been watching you that's them folks that's our citizens panel for tonight hey, I'll, uh, see that's what, what they're uh, what they're uh, doing oh, I forgot to turn them off okay uh, and I gotta get rid of them here 
And then, uh, okay, then I think we're offline. All right. Hey, look, that's it for tonight. Uh, the intersection is next with Jack and Amy. After that, at 1 o'clock, it's Connections uh, with, the, uh, with the people down there from Florida uh, doing a really good show. If you haven't heard it, give it a listen. Connections. And then tomorrow night at 8.30, it's our sports show, The Arena with the Franchise MC. And Damian Chaplin will be here at 9.30 with The Exchange, followed by a guy named Alex Bennett. Same time, same station in life at 10 o'clock. And saying, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.